18 handicap, looking to improve general contact and ball striking by shortening the length of backswing and increasing the amount of hip rotation through strike. Let's go back to setup and anytime that your full body is this far to the left of center, you're going to see the club path appear more inside than it actually is. So when you're at this P2 position here, club face is likely to be the same, but your hands and club are also likely to be a little bit more upright. So keep that in mind as we go along. Also your foot alignment might be less extreme. You're going to benefit by squaring that back foot up a bit more if your goal is to shorten the length of backswing. So continuing on that theme, there's really two ways to go about shortening your swing. One is the top down approach where you just simply try to take something off of it. Not recommended because it's hard to judge and unless you're recording each swing and monitoring your progress of length, it's hard to feel and it's hard to do. As we stop you at your P4 position, we can see that the left arm is flat. You've really over hinged the club in an open position and your lower body has turned to its maximum fully coiled up. That position has allowed you to really spin out of it where your second comment being that you'd like to turn your lower body more through strike, I disagree with because you have plenty of lower body rotation through strike. What you need is lower body displacement or more forward uh, weight transfer to get you more in front of the ball and increasing your downward angle of attack. I digress on that point. I don't think that we can necessarily cover that with this analysis, but in your efforts to shorten this length of backswing, the second approach should be the ground up method where you take a pitching wedge, nothing longer than that, and take backswings that are no more than left arm parallel to the ground, also known as your P3 position. It is much more difficult than you think it is, so record a bunch of swings trying to all stop at this position with good rhythm and good tempo, trying to come back down and strike the ball fully from here. If you do that enough times, you'll regain your rhythm, and you'll also gain the benefit of not rapidly opening up that face and then needing that backswing to have so much time to come back down and square it up. If you just shorten your backswing, or the top-down approach, you're not going to have as much time as you need to get back down and square the face as you currently have. So by shortening your backswing, you need to keep your left wrist flat, keep your face square, and then continue to work on your lower body positions through strike. I believe you'd be better off trying to get a bit more forward than rotational, but I digress on that. We can follow up at a later point. But work a wedge, work on that P3 arm parallel position as a drill, and see how difficult it is to actually stop there and hit a good clean ball strike from that position. Seems easy, although I know it is not. So for your tour comparison, I've got Cam Smith up here just to really draw a couple key points that I'd take away from his swing. The alignment of the feet, I'll get a path up here, so we'll get that up and then watch the takeaway. We're also slightly outside with the club and hands, face square, body turn with the hips and lower body. Much reduced, much more planted to the ground and he's probably only getting a good 25 to 35 degrees of hip turn on the way back, whereas you were 45, 50 degrees of turn. So with that shorter lower body rotation, there's a lot more time to allow that upper body to shallow and drop the club without that lower body starting to rapidly turn. As that club is settling at the top and making its transition, it's hard to see because the weight transfer is subtly getting shifted over to the left side before the rotation happens and the shallowing of the path finishes with that club riding right down that line. So the takeaway from this is to try to restrict the hip turn on the way back, give yourself more time at the top to make up for the long backswing, because your timing will be off when you shorten things up, so take more time with your swings, and then slowly but surely, your club face control will improve as you haven't opened it at the top, and you'll be able to consistently square it up more down at your impact position. Good luck with those changes. Sendaswing.com.